everybody. It's a real pleasure to be giving the second webinar in our Connecting with Now um, Sound Bites um, webinar series. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about um, the Adult Hearing Loss Research Programme. Um, and I want to give you an overview of some of the work that we're doing, give you a bit of a taste of it, and talk about what's really important for us in terms of the research. Some of you will know that I moved from the UK to Australia to work for now just over a year ago. And today I'm going to be talking about the research that's been carried out over the last year. So um, you can see here the uh, Department of Audiological Science that I lead. Um, these are all the uh, research audiologists and the uh, names that you see here are the um, research audiologists who have contributed to the research that I'm talking about today. Um, one of the really great things about working at NAL is the multidisciplinary approach that we take. And um, so we work very closely with the engineering department, which is headed by Jorge Mejia, and also the behavioral science department, which is um, headed by Liz Beach. So this is um, a schematic of the adult hearing loss uh, program. Um, our aim is to drive outstanding uh, people-focused research and to promote excellent evidence-based outcomes to improve quality of life for adults with hearing difficulties. So this is our main, uh, our aim here at the centre, healthy hearing, healthy ageing. And there are three uh, research themes which are part of the programme shown in the red triangles. Uh, first is connected health, then outcome measures and special populations. And underpinning these um, research themes are some of the NAL competencies that um, contribute to the research and have been developed over the last couple of years. So we um, have a number of com competencies that feed into the research we do, but for the projects we're talking about today, these are um, primarily behavioural insights, human technology interaction and big data and machine learning. So, um, the goal of the work um, that we do is now is to create impact. So create impact in terms of improving uh, the lives of people who have um, hearing loss. And we can do this in a number of different ways. We can create um, tools and questionnaires that can be used by audiologists and patients uh, to um, and measure their outcomes and, and look at different the effects of different interventions. And we can also influence clinical practice guidelines to um, help provide an evidence base uh, for clinical practice. Uh, there are a number of guiding principles um, that guide the research that we do in the Adult Hearing Loss uh, Research Programme. Uh, first off is um, applying uh, theory to uh, the work that we do. So um, the um, what you can see here is the ICF framework, which many of you will be familiar with. And the research that we do tends to sort of sit more in the participation uh, part of the framework, although we're doing more work uh, recently looking at um, the personal factors and um, part of the framework. Um, in terms of um, um, theory and health behaviour change, we know that's really important in a lot of the work that we do. So again, we're increasingly using health behaviour change theory to help guide uh, some of the work we do, um, and in particular the COMB model, um, which is shown here. In terms of research priorities, it's really important that the research that we do is the most important research because there's so much that we can do. Um, NAL has done some work over the last couple of years using design thinking principles to identify what the research priorities um, should be, and some of that has fed into the work I'm talking about today. And this complements really nicely some research priorities that are identified by other methods, for example, the research recommendations from the uh, NICE and guidance on um, hearing loss in the UK. Um, using uh, the pub, using uh, involving public and patients in our research is really important because we know that if we involve end users in the research, we get um, um, outputs which are much more um, related and aligned to uh, the end users' needs, and that's really really important. And then finally, and it kind of goes without saying, the research that we're doing has a very patient-centered approach. So I'm going to talk about uh, one of the uh, first, one of the uh, research themes, um, one of three. The first one is Connected Health, and we've got a number of different projects in this area which are led um, by David Allen, uh, Jeremy Pang and Tegan Young. And they'll all be presenting um, more on um, the detail of the uh, research I'm going to talk about um, over the next um, couple of months. 
So what we have here is the varying different types of mobile tech that can be used in connected hearing health and can be used to self-manage um, hearing loss and hearing aids. Um, so we're using all these different um, tools in the research that um, we, we're working on at the moment and now. What we, we want to do is to um, design um, tools and methods that can be used all the way along the patient pathway. So most of you will be very familiar with this, where people become aware they have hearing difficulties, they take action, get the hearing assessed, have some kind of intervention, often hearing aids, and then there's ongoing support. So we're looking at having an end-to-end -end digital uh, pathway. Now, one of the things um, we know that although um, there's been research on connected health for um, at least a decade, there's actually been fairly slow uptake of um, connect, connected health practices in uh, clinical practice. And so um, trying to increase the um, uptake of uh, connected health is one of the aims of uh, one of our projects. Um, so I've referred to uh, uh, PPI, patient and public um, involvement um, earlier. In Australia, this is called a community and con consumer involvement. And this is where we uh, bring um, uh, patients and audiologists and we involve them really right from the very outset of, of the research to help guide the uh, research questions that we're asking. So the important thing is that the patient, the public and the healthcare professions are working with the researchers and um, not for us. So you may have heard the expression, not about us, without us. So that's very much the approach that we're taking. And the reason for um, embedding PPI at the heart of the research is that um, it can help um, address some of the mismatch that we often see in research where the needs of the users are not met by the research agendas. So by involving patients in helping us set uh, the research agendas, we're hoping to, we're aiming to overcome that. And um, we also know that a PPI um, ensures that the research that is then is um, um, aligned to the patients and the end users needs. So what is it that um, patients and audiologists want, want and what works? So we've currently got four uh, connected health projects um, uh, currently being carried out. Um, I'll talk you through them very, very briefly, but as you can see, we're covering across the whole of the patient journey. So the first one is looking at barriers and facilitators to connected health, and the idea of this project was to increase uptake of connected health uh, within clinic. Um, it's a project looking at uh, pre-assessment, so before people even come into the clinic, and the aim of this is to better prepare patients and audiologists for the hearing assessment appointment. For um, uh, for the um, assessment and the intervention parts of the uh, journey, we're carrying out a project looking at um, in-person versus remote services. So what we found with COVID is because there's a, a been a real need because of social distancing to minimise face-to-face contact, um, there have been many more um, research, uh, remote services um, developed. And it's a great opportunity to be able to look to see whether the outcomes delivered by remote services or the same or different to those that are delivered um, in the conventional in-person in um, services. <clears throat> and our fourth project is looking at post-fitting and we're looking to um, improve um, support and increase uh, motivation and make sure that people um, know what it is um, that they need to do once they've had their, their hearing aids or their intervention. So um, I've mentioned this, this idea of um, in, in increasing uptake of connected health, and I came across this um, schematic, um, I came across this uh, schematic um, a couple of weeks ago. And I kind of think it sort of says it all really. Um, the COVID pandemic has really transformed um, our um, and the way that we uh, run remote services. And we can see this really, really nicely in this figure here. So this is um, from uh, one of our projects. And um, what you can see, we've got um, date, uh, months along here. The red line is the um, number of people who, um, who um, had COVID-19 in Australia. And you can see there was a, a really sharp increase. Um, throughout March and then it leveled off. But what's really, really fascinating is on the project that we're doing at looking at the um, trying to improve or increase the uptake of a, a telecare, sort of a, um, a smart um, smartphone connected hearing aid, uh, an app, what we can see is that round about um, January, beginning beginning of February, we started to implement some interventions to try and improve uptake. And there was some improvement shown, but as soon as the uh, pandemic started to take hold, we saw that the uptake of services 
um, of taking the telecare app um, pretty much mirrored that of uh, the COVID, um, COVID infections. So as I said before, social distancing requires us to have fewer face-to-face -face clinic appointments. And what's really important is that good quality remote service are needed now more than ever. And uh, the research that we're doing is going to be contributing to that. So I'm going to leave Connected Health now, move on to uh, the second research thing that I mentioned, which is outcome measures. And this is a talk about a project that's led by David Allen. So um, within the Australian Hearing Healthcare, there are no national guidelines on what outcomes should be used, why, how and when. And really, this is no different to many, many other countries. Um, this is a, um, a project that's uh, being funded by the Department of Health and specifically to look at outcomes that are measured within the hearing services program. So this is a program where um, um, hearing health care is provided um, free to many of those people who are who are eligible. Um, so it's probably the closest you get to the UK National Health Service. Um, so we, we're looking at um, trying to um, improve outcomes in the hearing services program. This really came about um, from um, a roadmap, uh, the roadmap of hearing, hearing health that was uh, produced by the Department of Health in 2019. And one of the aims of that was to try and standardise national reporting of hearing loss and to establish a, a national database. So the overall aim of this project um, is to develop and deliver recommendations on evidence-based patient-focused outcomes to measure the success of the hearing services programme. So this is um, really a schematic of how we've gone about it. So we started off by carrying out some scoping workshops to find out what professionals and the public thought was important in terms of measuring outcomes uh, for hearing uh, rehabilitation. There is no consensus on what outcomes should be used. So we've run two um, DELF reviews, which are consensus um, um, activities. And we did um, started off with um, a Delphi review of professional stakeholders. Um, but what's really, I think what's really exciting about this project is that we're also doing a Delphi review of clients and public. So we're making sure that clients, public, patients are at the heart of this uh, particular project. And then um, shortly we're going to be carrying out a national survey, uh, survey on what people are, are currently doing in terms of outcomes. Um, all of this work will be together into some consensus workshops that will be running in a, a couple of months time uh, with both professionals and the public with the aim being as i said to um, provide recommendations to the department of health now i'm not able to give you any results at the moment um but i do want to share a couple of snippets because this is really fascinating so um we've we've had at least one round of each of the two delta reviews and what the results are showing is that um, there are many domains that are being suggested by professionals that they think are important that are not currently captured by existing standard um, outcome measures. So, for example, measures um, or domains such as well-being, so, so social isolation and loneliness. Um, for the, um, when we look at the uh, Delta review of the patients, um, although we see some similarities in the domains uh, between the professionals and the patients, what's really interesting is that there are some marked differences of what they think is important. So, for example, that hearing loss impacts less on the family um, is one um, domain and that they can have more control over their hearing. So, as I said, this, was, um, this research um, is continuing for another three months and we'll be uh, talking about the results as, as they become available. The third and final um, research theme I'm going to talk about today is on special populations. And we've got two different uh, populations in this group. One is unilateral hearing loss. <clears throat> and this is research that's being led by Paola and Cherty. And uh, both Paola and Ingrid um, have just started um, working on um, doing some work in aged care. But of course, the pandemics um, really got in the, in the way of that. Uh, we were going to, in fact, we were just starting to do some work with Macquarie University <clears throat> to um, um, start looking at um, doing some surveys in care homes. So I'm going to just say a bit about the uh, unilateral hearing loss um, work that we've done with a, with a study that was done last year. 
And um, what's really interesting about this project is that and it's been able to we've been able to use some of the new methods and technologies and techniques that now has developed over the last few years. One of those is looking at the uh, the NAL DCT, the dynamic conversation test, which really gives an, um, a measure of what it's like to have realistic conversation. So um, um, the uh, materials were recorded in real world environments and we um, can play them in the 41 speaker and the sonic, sonic chamber. So this is a larger picture of it. It's um, a huge anechoic chamber um, with uh, 40, 41 speakers to really give an idea of real world sound all around you. Um, so um, one of the other um, tests we did was looking at collecting outcomes using ecological momentary assessments. So we're looking at real world, real time, um, measures of what people think the impact of unilateral hearing loss is. And then finally, we've been looking at cognition, so looking at working memory. And we found for all these three um, tests that the people with unilateral hearing loss uh, performed more poorly um, than those who had normal hearing. And then the final um, um, method that we used was looking at head tracking. So just how much um, people with unilateral hearing loss and had to move the heads in terms of being able to pick up um, what was being said. So there were two speakers, one at 25 degrees and one at 40 degrees um, from the midline. And we can see that our normal hearing uh, population here was able to pretty much target fairly closely where the sound was coming from. And this was done by having a head tracking camera on the top of the head. Um, for the unilateral hearing loss group, and this has been normalised for the side of the uh, poorer ear, you can see that they've had to move, they have to move their heads a lot more to be able to tune in to find out where the uh, sound was coming from. And again, not surprisingly, we see really significant differences. So it's really giving us some understanding of some of the unique um, um, issues um, that are relevant to unilateral hearing loss. And we have another project that we're currently uh, developing a proposal that we'll be looking to start in a couple of months time. In terms of our other population, which was aged care, so this is looking at hearing related communication in care homes. Um, as I said, this, uh, this research has been put on hold um, because of the pandemic. Um, but we're going to be um, using some of the research priorities that um, were identified in some of the work that I did when I was in Nottingham. Um, we know that hearing loss is complex, dementia is complex, care homes are complex. So the work that we did used a, a realist synthesis approach which aims to look at very complex situations. Um, this involves looking at the literature and involving people who are really key to the uh, situation. In this case, we involved audiologists, um, uh, care home managers, people who worked in care homes, family of uh, people who are in care homes. And we, we ended up with five different um, research priorities that we'll start to uh, pick up and investigate when the uh, pandemic uh, dies down. So um, that's really a whistle um, stop tour of the adult hearing loss programme. Um, and um, we have, what's really exciting is that we have a whole bunch of other projects that we're currently uh, developing. So I just really sort of scratched the surface on some of the work we've been doing over the, the last year. We've probably got about uh, four or five really, uh, really exciting projects um, that we're just waiting to get signed off or we're just finishing um, the proposals for that we maybe I'll even be able to um, give a webinar on those and um, towards the end of the series. So look out for some really great, exciting, relevant research um, to um, for both uh, people with hearing loss and hearing healthcare professionals. And finally, I just want to go and say that, um, as you, you will have probably gathered, it's really important for us that we work with uh, people with hearing loss and also with hearing healthcare professionals. We've recently um, just started um, a hearing healthcare professional database where people are interested in helping us with our research. We can we can sort of have um, all together in a database and we can call upon when we've got different projects. And this has mean, mainly been focused on Australian um, audiologists, but we're really, really happy to have people internationally um, and take part in our research. And you can see some of our research, particularly the Connected Health, we can take much wider than just Australia. Paola Palinchetti is um, leading on this, so either drop uh, Paola an email if you're interested 
or you can use the QR code here to get directly into the database and enter uh, your details. So what's coming up next in terms of the adult hearing loss research? Um, so we've got a number of different webinars um, by uh, the project leads here. So David's going to be talking about the outcome measure studies, um, so, um, some of the connected health studies and talk about future trends. Jeremy is going to talk about the pre-assessment projects, so looking at preparing people appropriately. Taken is going to be talking about our post-fitting project, which is looking at motivation and inter in, in, in providing the best information for people following an inter intervention. Paolo will be talking about the unilater unilateral hearing loss research we're doing and um, talk about some connected health guidelines that we've developed. And finally, I'm going to be talking about some, some work that I've done over the last couple of years, and which is very relevant to the work that we're doing here, looking at um, smartphone connected hearing aids and remote technologies. So finally, I'd like to thank again the Department of Audiological Science, an absolutely great bunch of people to work for, work with. Um, thank the Department of Health, um, who fund um, NAL's research. And also to thank Hearing Australia, who um, we, we partner very closely with and we're working with on a number of, of projects and who help fund some of our research. Mm -hmm.